I f when I knew that he was leaving, I was like, he's not gonna make it. That in your pipe and smoke it. So what do we do while we're waiting for weather windows? We make a crepes. We've been waiting for an appropriate weather window to be able to travel north. That may have been our last chance when we came up from Puerto Aventuras. Yeah, the predominant winds in this area have almost always been south easterlies and this is the longest northeasterly we've ever experienced in this coastline. It's been like non-stop. But it is normal during the winter to have northeasterlies. Yes, they come, they come in, but they usually last two, three days, and then the southeasterly blows them away usually. Not the wind speed that, uh, that bothers me, it's the or, direction. Yes, the wind direction that is also uh, completely opposed to the Gulf Stream, which makes for the, a hell of a ride, basically. We, we've experienced it more south of us. Which means, you know, you just boo, 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 you don't go anywhere. Yeah, you don't, you don't move. At best, you, you don't travel efficiently, and at worst, it, it can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Our neighbor, who was anchored next to us just a couple, well, like, what, three weeks ago now? Who left at the beginning of this northerly starting to blow. He, yep. he left right at the beginning of the northern. We went, ooh, that's not a good time to leave. We heard from word of mouth, uh, I haven't been able to confirm online, and I've been looking through the Coast Guard website and everything, but apparently, his boat sank and he had to be rescued. I can't find, usually when you check the U.S. Coast Guard website. So they talk about who they They talk about recent rescues that they've done and stuff, but I couldn't find any reference to his rescue. So people think I'm kind of like joking or something or making excuses. I'm, I'm not sure how. Nobody thinks he's making excuses. Nobody's left I, I, I think that people who don't travel by boat think that it's an excuse making thing like uh, planes are planes are taking off from the Cancun airport every day here shit I wouldn't fly a plane in this weather <laughs> well nobody that we know of has has left this harbor lots of people have gone south we've had a few boats come from the states we've had boats coming down uh, I spoke to a guy he just recently came down from Florida the other day uh, they had a whole boat trip Although you have the wind going with you at that point. Yeah, and I think they already left for... You're against the current. They left for uh, Rio Dulce. They were trying to go put their boat there. I mean, they said we have to go back to the U.S. for the holidays, so they were just rushing. So this is us in a rush. <laughs> yes, we are technically in a we're rush. We're in a rush to try and finally leave here now that the boat can leave here, but now uh, we've been stuck here for several weeks. What happens to all the fish that you catch if it doesn't go straight into your stomach after a trip? You caught a lot of fish on the way back up here. What happens to all that fish? In this case, we salted it and dried it. We did some salt dried fish. We did some umami bombs. It's basically salting them overnight. And then these ones, I actually give them a quick rinse with some clean fresh water before hanging them. I wash off the excess salt. Step one, cache of bonito, tuna, skipjack, basically any any fish, Sierra mackerel, any fish you want in uh, you have in abundance. And if you have a lack of fridge or canning, you just cut it into slivers. I like to leave the skin on to dry them. Uh, you sold them usually overnight and then you put it out to dry anywhere between five days to ten days depending on the weather. This dried I think um, six full days of sun they had mm -hmm. with a couple of rainy days in between years. Which I cut in half so it makes it easy to, to string so it's e easily strung on something. Great for making soups and stuff they like they like little soup sticks you just throw in a in a pot of boiling water with some seaweed you get a nice really nice seafood stock it's salty it's umami yeah it's healthy it's full of omegas this, this is all natural fish oil look how oily my hands are you can literally see the fish dripping it's simple it's fish and salt 
You could technically put some spices when you marinate them with the salt, but like some pepper, maybe a little cinnamon. But I think the, the flavor of the fish is overpowering, so this, it's just a waste of spices. Pepper is good uh, when you marinate it with salt because it keeps the flies away. It not necessarily gives, uh, if you're in a place that has lots of flies, uh, the pepper is really good for, for stopping the flies from, from landing on your fish. If it's got lots of pepper or even paprika, like you put a lot of chili powder in it. So very rarely we have access to uh, uh, canning jars, that, like uh, out of the US, they're difficult to find. So this is the most energy saving and easiest way of storing excess fish on a boat when you don't have a fridge is to salt and dry it. You're hoping for a piece to fall, Joko. Are you hoping for a piece? Oh, it's really like that piece. It's like in the sunshine and the right angle. It's like an opal. managed to uh, get a new battery, an extra 12 volt, 195 minute. I had a, v uh, a viewer calculating how many amp hours that is. That's not 100 amp hours. It's just, under, is I'm just under 100. Un under 100 amp hours extra of 12 volt battery for wire, lights, connectors. Those are all given to us by our viewers. Viewer gifted projects. The wheel. More lights. More lights in the boat. Yeah, the last two, and then we have to get more lights. Reminder, we have our backbone that goes to some bus bars. So all you have to do is connect the, a length of wire from the bus bar to the light. First testing when the light works. And it's opposite of all reason and logic for some reason. And yeah, light works. So the black to the positive, the white to the negative. pretty long considering the light is going to go right there because we're going to end up redoing windows, port lights, and then we are going to probably put the light somewhere different. added a net behind the boat. Uh, yeah, the, an extra bit of netting to keep Choco from flying off the back, even though it might make your fishing a little more complicated. You've gotten the engine um, check before use down to a kind of an art, down to a science. We check the water we every time your, now. Yeah, and the oil. You usually have to top up the fresh water slash coolant. God knows where it's going, hopefully not in the <laughs> engine. <laughs> it could be going anywhere because Every time you have to add a couple of milliliters of, of water, fresh water. So I don't forget. So where's it going? I don't know. Hopefully <laughs> not in the engine. You check the oil each time because our engine leaks oil. You take it out. Yes, I know. I know. I know. And I do it two, three times usually just to be sure. You've pulled this dipstick out one time and seen white stuff or no? No, I haven't seen signs of water on the dipstick. Where I have seen signs of possibly water is up here in the cylinder head, which is not a very good thing. Up here, I've seen what I think might be, which is also where the where the water where the water vapor might end up at the highest point on the engine. Right on on here, this to me is a sign of water, probably coming from the freshwater pump. Then usually we put the engine in neutral. We try at least. We pump out the bottom 
half of the water in, in under the engine, and then we have to mop up all that oil. You check the tightness of the shaft. This is not tightening it. See how it's loose? Yeah. So you, you, you re-tighten it, and then you, and you can go all, you loosen it to where it wants to lift. And then the best thing you do is you hold that, and then you, you tighten the other one. With two heads, you, you them. Yep. Do you do that every time? Almost every time. I do it if I'm going on a more long journey. If I'm going to have the engine run a couple of hours, I check periodically while the engine is running. If it needs to be if it's too hot, I open it more. If it's dripping too much, I close it. So the engine is quite finicky, but we know that. You Viewers of this channel already know that. This is running, which seems to be the... The issue in this part of the world is that everybody's engine is as... We brought the outboard engine that was given to us to kind of look at and be able to try and get running. I guess it's not running. I guess I'm, uh, yeah, it's, given, it's been giving emotional distress to the mechanics. So I don't think he wants to work on it anymore. Apparently, he's, I heard from another person that they heard him screaming and shouting and swearing, and he was trying to fix our engine again. Before we leave, we'll have to bring Choco to the vet. Yeah. For paperwork. So Anal yeah. inspection. Yeah, they'll inspect him and then say that he's healthy. We will. I'm getting a dentist appointment before I go. A very important thing to do before leaving Mexico: take care of the teeth as much as possible. Get some sort of pot holders so that shit doesn't fly off the stove here. This is like our issue right now. We we've, we've got like five days of travel, and maybe shit is gonna go flying as we cook in the in that time period. What can we do to like metal? Put two metal bars here and two across, have them spot welded. 